Ooh, what's going on out there? I'm just joking. What is going on you guys and welcome back to another video on the channel. We got an emergency upload as you can tell I'm sitting here on my floor filming this. This is my floor that I'm sitting on because um, I felt like I I feel like I owe it to the community I feel like I owe it to our subscribers being in a position that I'm in to come out here and just say a few words on this stock market crash how we should approach it, should we be worried, what should we be doing with our stocks, buying, selling, holding. To be completely honest, I've watched a number of YouTube videos this morning. I don't think that the other YouTubers in this community, no disrespect, are doing this justice. A lot of panic that I'm seeing, a lot of, um, we'll, get, we'll get onto that a little bit later in the video. But I'll start off by saying this, for many people, me included, this is probably, not probably, this is the first real crash, the real significant drop that we're experiencing if you're a younger investor, um, as well as if you're just a new investor, right? We have to go back about 11 years, 11 years now, before we kind of hit that, the Great Recession, which of course was, was before my time, that of course being one of the major, major downturns that we've gone through in the stock market. Uh, I believe oil, like crude oil is down about 30% today, 30 plus percent. A single holding of mine, I looked at my watch list, down 63% in a single day. That's 63% drop, I, one of my holdings in a single day. That is just, um, that is just insane. I don't even think I've had a stock drop 63% over a long period of time. This happened in the snap of a finger over a single day. So yeah, this is the uh, stock market crash that I guess everyone was waiting for, talking about. And whether we're just in the beginning of that, whether we got a long time ahead of us, or whether this is just a single day thing, we'll talk about the end of the video and, and how we should approach this. Point being here is that if you are panicking right now, you, you should not be. There is no real reason, if you have the right expectations of how the stock market works, to be panicking at this point. Um, I can pop up a chart and I'll, I'll dig one up. I don't have one off the top of my hand, but there's so many charts that we see of these types that show bull markets versus bear markets our ups and downs in the stock market, times like this are not only normal, but they are healthy for the stock market. I know that's hard to think, geez, the coronavirus being spread everywhere, this can't, this can't be healthy for us. Um, I mean, it's not healthy in the sense that, oh, our economy is doing great and whatnot, but we have to have these pullbacks from time to time. In fact, the studies show typically every seven to nine years, depending on what sources you're looking at, we do enter into a stock market downturn like this, a severe one, a stock market crash. And I guess we've been going on 10 years now, 11 years, but this is to be expected that we come into these times of, of downturn. If you're not familiar with that, like if you don't have an understanding of how the stock market goes up and down, you need to take a step back and you need to touch up on that type of stuff, uh, on your expectations. That's one of the first things we teach when it comes to the stock market is coming in with the right expectations and knowing that over the course of your 20, 30 year investing period, you are going to come across these years. And you know, in our Q and A video with my dad, if you didn't catch that one, the last video we posted, he gave the perfect analogy of when you're on a plane ride, when you're out flying uh, across the country, you will very likely at some point hit turbulence. That is just what comes with going on a plane ride. And if that's too scary for you, if you're uh, literally in the back, like freaking out and panicking, saying, turn this freaking plane around, turn this plane around, then you shouldn't be flying in the first place. It's part of the process. It's a speed bump along the long road of, of investing. And as a long-term investor, a drop like this is to be expected. I know it's tough in the meantime. It's tough while we're you know, in the heat of things here. But if we're able to think out 10 years from now, 15 years from now, this is probably, not probably, we're gonna look back at this, whether this drop gets more severe or not, we're gonna look back at this time and say, hey, this was very likely gonna be one of the greater times uh, to go in and actually add stocks, add assets to our portfolio. We don't get opportunities like these crashes, like I said, it's every decade or so, let's just call it that, seven to nine years, every 10 years. Every decade or so, we get these opportunities, these deep value opportunities to go in and buy stocks. We may be at the forefront of that coming right now. Now, that leads to another point, um, which I think is a really important one. Are we, like, should we expect more of this? Is this just a one day thing? Uh, what, what can we expect? That is something that we don't know. And I'm not one to sit up here and pretend that I know what's gonna happen, what's in store for the future, uh, how this virus is gonna spread, how much longer the stock market is gonna drop. We don't know that, but 
there is a very, very strong way to approach this as an investor because really the important question that we ask ourselves now is, I mean, first of all, let's get this out of the way. Selling right now is probably one of the worst things you can do if you're a long-term investor. If you're, uh, if you're a short-term investor, again, this is why it becomes so hard because this stuff comes out of nowhere. If you need to, if you're expecting this money in the next week or the next month or the next three months for that matter, you're pretty much screwed. Um, this is a great example of how fast things can turn and why if you know you need this money for a down payment three months from now, you know you need the money for taxes or whatever it is, you can't afford to deploy that into the market because just like that, and I mean, this is a fast drop that we're experiencing, just like that, your money can be depleted by a quarter, uh, a quarter of your assets, half of your assets, um, very, very possible. And if you do need the money over a short period of time, well, I hate to say it, you're in a bit of a pickle. Now for a long-term investor, which is why we always promote here at least, at least a five, seven, 10, 15, 20 year time horizon where we can ride this out. The question then becomes for us, when do we start buying into this market? And again, there's no uh, black and white answer to that. We won't know until we look back when the best time to buy into this market was, but a really, really great approach that I, that I personally take and that, what I would, and that I would share with you guys is if there's an asset that you're looking at, take Nike stock, take Starbucks, take a company that you have on your watch list that you believe is trading at a good price, if it's an asset that you say, hey, today looking at this price of at looking at this price of Nike, right? All else being equal, I don't I don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow, I don't know what's gonna happen a week from now, but at today's price, if I look at Nike stock and I'm willing to pay the price that it's trading at, I feel that's gonna be a good investment over the next 10 year period. Dabble. Dabble away. Because one thing that we can say for certain is we're, you know, 15, 20% off highs. Again, all stocks independently will be at their own ranges here and there. We don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. We don't know how deep this drop is gonna go. And trying to pick out a bottom is just, uh, it's like finding a needle in a haystack. It's just not gonna happen. Um, we're not gonna find the bottom. So instead of waiting out, look, approach each, go, go into each asset that you're looking at. Again, say it's the company Nike. Look at the company and say, is this a price that I'm willing to pay? Is this a price that I'm willing to pay? Itchy, okay. Itchy, itchy. Itchy, itchy, I got you, I got you, I got you, I got you, boopy. Yeah, where was I? Um, that is the only logical way to approach this, is that if there's a stock that you are looking at, look at the price that it's trading at today and don't think about anything else, is that a price that you're willing to pay? for an asset that you believe will do well over 10, 15 year period. And in many cases, you look at some of our uh, very strong companies, our Walmarts, our McDonald's, our, our, our Apples, let's take Walmart, McDonald's, Starbucks and whatnot. Yeah, there is definitely going to be an impact from this coronavirus, a pretty legitimate impact. Here, chew on, don't chew on your, don't chew on your feet. Make sure you can chew on this guy. You gotta be quiet. Although there will absolutely be a short-term impact, like do you think a company like Walmart um, or McDonald's or Starbucks are not gonna be around in 10 years because of the events that we're seeing today? And I mean, that's a decision for you to make for yourself. Um, that's, you, you can go out and make that decision for yourself. But if you do believe that they're gonna be around in 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, then take this as an opportunity to go out and buy some stocks on a discount. Now, again, I'm not saying that now's, now's the time to buy. We could see this drop continue over the next week, over the next month. This could be a prolonged uh, drop. We could send the stock market into a six month drop. That's very, um, that's very, very possible. And again, the way to approach that is to look at it today and say, is this price a price that I'm willing to pay when you can fast forward 10 years out? Because again, you're not gonna hit the bottom during this down market, but you can definitely pick up some discounts. So does that make sense what I'm saying? I hope it does. Um, it makes sense in my head. It's funny enough, um, a couple stocks that I've been buying, some energy stocks, which I'm sure some of us on the channel know, I thought they were showing value even before the stock market crashed, which is crazy enough. And now they've come down even more. Um, I'm absolutely gonna be taking an opportunity to go in and actually buy some, um, uh, double down, go pay, go add some more 
of um, a couple energy stocks that I've been watching because that is an area that I believe is now offering more value. And it's uh, pretty crazy to me to see the other YouTubers, you know, almost succumbing to the noise here of the stock market crash of what's going on. Um, I feel like it's our duty to keep you guys level, keep you guys grounded, keep things level headed. Because again, if you, um, if you have any understanding of how investing works over time and how a long-term investor should approach the stock market, there's no reason to, to be panicking here. In fact, in our uh, discord group, I've been, I woke up this morning, opened the discord group and it has been like insane how positive uh, the, their mindsets are and how positive they're approaching this, this stock market crash. We are almost excited, not even almost, we are excited to go through this. This is my first real experience as, as an investor going through a significant crash. And rather than panicking and worrying about selling, we're taking this as a learning opportunity. We're taking this as one of those times where, yeah, we don't know how long it's gonna last, but this will be, you know, when we look at it in the big grand scheme of things, this will be one of those amazing opportunities to get some good quality names under our belt. And my advice to you guys, to get through this, uh, the viewers at home, is first of all, touch up on your, your knowledge of the stock market and how these ebbs and flows work and that this is completely normal to see drops like this from time to time. You can't expect every year to be a good year. Um, I also think like looking back, a really, really useful thing to do is look back at like Buffett videos. You know, Warren Buffett to me is the best person at just, um, you know, taking a step back, getting, getting less attached to our portfolios and thinking of our stocks as like ownership in a business or like owning a farm or like owning a house. Who cares what the, the current price is valued at today? If you own a business, if you own a farm, who cares what it's valued at on a day-to-day -day basis? Your goal is to look at this farm and say, how well is this gonna, um, what is this gonna provide for me over the next 10 years? And I look at companies in my portfolio, in fact, I'll tell you something in just a second. When I look at the Walmarts, the McDonald's, the Coca-Cola's, the Pepsi's, there's no question to me that these companies are gonna do well over 10 years, so I don't care what people are valuing, valuing them at today. In fact, my third and I guess final tip for you guys to finish off this video is, I, I swear to you, I have not looked at my portfolio yet today. I haven't looked at it probably in the past week or so. I looked at my watch list this morning, which is where I keep up to date with what's going on, and I've got a pretty good idea of what's going on in my portfolio, but I haven't opened up my Quest Trade app, I haven't opened up my Manulife statements where my assets are held, it does me no justice to look at the actual account and look at the dollar value of how things are doing. There's, there's no reason to look at that because again, I have confidence in my companies that yeah, there may be a short-term impact here because this virus is spreading like crazy and yeah, business is slowing down. There's a legitimate reason to be, uh, to be worried here. I guess worried, yeah. There's a legitimate reason for these companies to be slowing down but the quality of businesses in my portfolio, I have no question that they're gonna be fine 10 years from now. So the only way that I approach this, even though my dollar value of my portfolio is going down, is I can look at the percentages of these and say, wow, is this a price today that I'm willing to pay to add more shares of Walmart, or to add more shares of Disney, or Starbucks, or whatever's in my portfolio? Because again, that's how my portfolio is constructed with the types of companies that I don't have to worry about over a 10, 15, 20 year rolling period. So. Hopefully this video at least provided some insight for you guys. Again, this is just here in my here in my apartment, man. And it's just I got my Legos that I've been building, which are which are my prized possessions now. But um, yeah, just go on. Just just don't panic. That's really what it is, guys. Um, if there's one thing I want you to take away from this video, it's just that um, be careful what you listen to on the internet and especially the influencers on YouTube. For a lot of them, this is their first time going through a market crash too, and they probably haven't looked back on the previous crashes. They haven't done their research on um, how this is not normal, or how this is normal, and they're panicking like, you know, giving just terrible advice. Just stay the course. If you're a long-term investor, this is what is expected. These, are, these times are just those speed bumps that people always talk about, and I know in the heat of it, it just it isn't as easy to go through, but again, that's why we have plans. That's why we have to stick to our strategy. That's why we have to come in with the right expectations. I went to the gym this morning, played some basketball. It's about, I don't even know what time it is. Oh my God, it's 12, 12 now. Um, I had some eggs, a smoothie. Just gonna go on with my life as normal, not even look at my portfolio. Hopefully this was a video that can help keep you guys grounded as well. I hope you guys appreciate my insight here. If you have any questions or comments uh, to share, I'm happy to hear your thoughts on that too. But I uh, wish you guys all the best.
again, no, don't panic sell, no reason to do that. If anything, start picking and choosing where to buy, right? Doesn't mean you have to do it today, but if you see an asset that's priced at something you're willing to pay, that's the way that I'm approaching things. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, hit that subscribe button. Investing Academy down below if you do want to become a student. First link down below. Thanks for watching.